Over $1.4 trillion was wiped out from the US stock market and over $1.2 billion wiped out from the crypto market. What caused this crash? And when will we possibly see the bottom where the markets will start moving upwards again? Let's break it down. Hey everybody, welcome into the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. I'm your host, Tony Edward. On your way in, please hit that subscribe button as well as a thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five-star rating and review. Well, folks, the bloodbath continues. Bitcoin currently at $54,015. On the daily RSI, it is hitting that oversold zone. So going below 30, that's a good sign. Same thing for the stock market. It's approaching the oversold zone. So in the S&P 500, uh, it's RSI below 30. Uh, also, you have the NASDAQ, it's RSI below 30. The Dow Jones also, not well, I should say near it. It's currently near about a 35. So it's on its way down. And the DXY, Guys, it is crashing as well. So everything is crashing. <laughs> and obviously, J Japan stock market is down, uh, Korea, South Korea as well. It, it's it's across the board, right? This is the global recession hit. And I'm going to share some of the reasons. What, you know, what happened here? What was the first domino to fall? We're going to talk about the J Japanese yen carry trade and much more. Uh, the VIX, which is that volatility index uh, here, look at that, spiking. It is actually headed to the overbought zone, if you want to call it that. But we know that's not really an accurate measure for, for the VIX. But look at that spike. Incredible. Um, we need this to normalize before we can get back to normal, guys. It's really, really rough out there. Um, so let me give you some stats. Over $1.4 trillion was wiped out from the U.S. stock market today. Uh, for the crypto market, over $1.2 billion was liquidated. Guys, don't use leverage. I've been saying it for a long time. I don't use leverage. And this is what helps me to sleep at night and why I don't lose significant money in the markets. I learned my lesson years ago, and I just buy spot. I buy the bear market bottoms. I buy these massive corrections and so forth and crashes, and it allows me to position myself and have a long-term macro outlook and make money. It saves me from a lot of trouble with liquidations and much more, whether you're going long or short. So guys, in addition to the stock market taking a massive hit, we saw a lot of brokerage and trading platforms. They were uh, down. A lot of them are hitting the circuit breakers like, uh oh, we got to slow this down. And the names that were having issues were Charles Schwab, TD America, Vanguard, E-Trade, Fidelity, City. So this is a pretty significant situation, guys. Now, is it the end of the world? No. Let's go back to March 2020. Many of you know what happened there. And, you know, that was the one market correction that actually scared me because it wasn't so much that the market crashed, but you had the external factors, a true black swan event with the COVID pandemic. And then all markets tanked and people were fearful, right? It wasn't this, oh, the recession is coming. Here's bad economic data. So you kind of knew something was around the corner, which was happening now. But the true black swan event was definitely March 2020 because no one saw that coming. And that's the point of a black swan event. No one sees it coming. This could be some sort of pseudo black swan event, or if you want to call it a gray swan event, right? It was somewhat expected. Of course, we can't time these things. We don't know when they will happen, but... That's what I honestly think. And uh, look, I, I learned my lesson from this, guys. And what Warren Buffett says that be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. Now, that doesn't mean you just automatically go buy. You have to watch a chart because you don't want to catch a falling knife. Things are still on the downside here. And even though the RSI is hitting the oversold zone, it doesn't mean that there couldn't be further downside. But I do think that uh, hitting that oversold zone uh, could mean a relief rally may be coming soon, but that doesn't mean that relief rally is a pump to new all-time highs. It's just a bounce from the lows because it's so oversold, but then it could roll over and hit the lows again. So this is why we got to let this play out. It, my thing right now is a waiting game. Let the dust settle. Let's, let's calm down a bit, right, and uh, see where things go. Now, some folks are coming out optimistic, like Peter Brandt. He's a legendary trader. I had him on the podcast uh, earlier this year, and uh, he's been doing this for a long time. I'm actually trying to get him on the podcast this week to talk about what's happening. You know, he's been calling for some sort of pullback and correction for a long time. Uh, and a lot of people were trolling him on Twitter, but he was correct. And he's saying, look, 
I think it's possible that a pump may be coming soon. So similar to what we saw in March of 2020, where Bitcoin, after an incredible dump, right? And, and look, all markets as well, started finding its way out, pumping upwards, recovering um, over the subsequent weeks and months. So uh, I think Peter may be a bit spot on here where we could see this because the markets become so oversold. There's so much fear. There's only one way for it to go. In addition, we could see the Fed start cutting rates and more liquidity being injected into the markets. And I've been sharing with you guys, liquidity is on the rise. M2 money supply in the United States is back over 21 trillion on the rise again. Even China's uh, liquidity injections are on the rise. It's breaking out. So globally, we're seeing these uh, world governments and central banks start to inject li liquidity. They're going to start money printing again. This is the economic system we live in. So eventually they have to. It's not a matter of, uh, oh, I don't know if they're going to do it. No, they have to because they have to keep printing money to keep the, the, the economies going, guys, because it's a debt-based fiat system and they have to keep debasing the currency. And as we've been talking about for a long time, that liquidity uh, and when you aggregate it to the global liquidity, when that rises, asset prices move with it, right? The, the pricing of the assets start to increase because there's more money in the system. Uh, this is simple economic stuff, but I want to make sure for folks who want to really understand the markets, these are the metrics and touch points you have to look at to understand why do markets move? Why do asset prices increase? And these are certainly uh, catalysts. So guys, they're going to start printing money unless it's the end of the world and it's Armageddon, then you know all bets are off the table. But uh, if it's just narratives and noise and this and that and uh, you know the election uncertainty, possible war in the Middle East and so forth, all of that's going to lead to more money printing. We've seen it time and time again. Go study history. They keep doing it over and over. Sure, the stories change, the narratives change, but they, the one thing that remains constant, we have to keep printing money to keep this system going and uh, asset prices rise with it. And that includes the stock market, crypto, and much more. So I hope Peter is right here that, uh, look, <laughs> based on his chart analysis, we see some pump come uh, and uh, you know takes us new highs. Now, will this pump happen this month or even September? Maybe not, because what we've seen, and I shared this data yesterday, August and September historically are not great performing months for the markets. The months that are great performing are October into November. Those perform really well. So we could be sideways chopping, you know, bouncing up and down for a while until the market finds its bottom and then starts moving upwards. So that's why I said I am not buying the dip right now because the dip could keep dipping further. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to keep an eye on it and uh, start dollar cost averaging. And once I see the volatility and the VIX and all these things calm down a bit, and then uh, take my positions and get ready for the new uh, all-time highs. Um, and I believe we're still in a bull market. Once again, there hasn't been any major uh, invalidation. And uh, just when in doubt, zoom out. You just look at the charts. This is not 2022 where we are in a massive macro downtrend. We've been in an uptrend since January 2023. The charts, the data shows you that. Um, and unless, like I said, it's the end of the world, it's Armageddon, then markets will keep going, guys. Uh, the, yes, you'll have your volatility. Yes, you have your pullbacks and crashes, but it will keep going. Go back and look at all the crashes, whether it's the dot-com crash 2008, whatever it may be, uh, it will keep going. So I have a macro view, so it doesn't matter to me what the hell happens over the next month or two, because I know ultimately they will keep printing money and the asset prices will keep going up. Now, guys, as to what causes crash, <laughs> let's start with Jim Cramer. <laughs> Guys, on August 2nd, and a lot of people are tweeting this, he, he tweeted out, NASDAQ features dropping as if it's the end of the world. Memo to all, it isn't. <laughs> there were signs, my friends, but we weren't paying attention. Uh, but funny enough, he tweeted this morning, remember this, gold held up a lot better than crypto. <laughs> That's a bullish sign, my friends. Remember, inverse Kramer. Always do the opposite of what Jim Cramer says. Don't listen to this guy. He sets up the exit liquidity for the institutional investors. It's it's so funny. This is like one of the most perfect contrarian indicators ever in the history of markets. 
Uh, so guys, what caused this crash? And I did a newsletter on Substack and be sure to subscribe. It's free where I highlighted some of the points. So I'm going to summarize. I'm not going to read through everything. Of course, you can go check it out in the newsletter. But for one, um, it's what I've been saying. The stock market was overbought. It's RSI was over 70. By the textbook definition, it meant that some sort of price correction was coming. Now, was anyone anticipating this major crash? Of course not but there was weakness being set up is, is the foundation I want you to understand. The market was overextended. So whether it was S&P 500, NASDAQ, or whatever it may be. So right away, you're at that tip where it just takes some sort of spark or push, right, for you to fall off the cliff. So that was a, a big part of it. The other was, I think people were starting to look at different indicators, like the SOM indicator saying that, oh, we're in a recession. Uh, the Fed is not acting. Rates are still high. Employment numbers came in low. Uh, you throw in that there is possibly war in the Middle East and there's uh, political uncertainty in the United States. All these things set the table of people being a bit nervous and a little bit of panic setting and right? watching markets closely like, hmm, if something uh, breaks, we, we need to dump right away. So you're in that environment where people are feeling a bit nervous. And then you have the Japanese yen carry trade. So what the hell is this? And I don't want to get too much in the weeds of this because it is its own can of worms. Um, and I don't deal with Forex and all these things on here. But the TLDR is that many traders were borrowing the Japanese yen at low interest rates because I think they were at negative interest rates. And they were converting them to US dollars and they were using the US dollars to then buy US stocks and equities. But then the Bank of Japan said, hey guys, we're going to raise interest rates. So what happened? It caused the Japanese yen to strengthen significantly against the US dollars. This put the traders in a lot of trouble. And many of them have to uh, pay higher interest rate on the Japanese yen they borrowed. And now they're facing huge Forex losses as well. So the U.S. assets they were holding uh, may not be, be enough to repay the Japanese yen they have borrowed. So this is causing a huge unwind of these uh, trade positions and they start dumping. Right. So that that was kind of the spark that causes crash and it's causing tons of sell pressure. So this was the do first domino here to just kick it all off. And uh, now we're in free fall. And of course, crypto is highly correlated to the stock market and global liquidity and all these things. So crypto is feeling the pain. There's a lot of sell pressure coming from, from it. So it absolutely makes sense, right? We know of the correlation. So with, with the stock market dumping, of course, this is going to dump as well. People are going to exit and try to get that liquidity. So what the hell happens next? Well, guys, I think it's a waiting game, honestly. Um, and maybe we find some sort of bottom in this month. Maybe the Fed comes out and cuts rates. Janet Yellen at the Treasury injects more liquidity. She continues doing her QE 2.0, stealth QE. And um, I think we're starting to see the signs, though, of global liquidity on the rise. So these countries around the globe uh, whose markets are tanking, they're going to start injecting liquidity. So that means they have to fire up the money printer. So personally, I think that over the next two months or so is a wash. Like, don't expect anything. It will be awesome if the markets bounce and we see a nice V-shaped recovery. I'm not anticipating that, but it would be great if it happens. But I'm looking towards uh, Q4, guys, where uh, historically, Based on the stats that October, November are the best performing months. And once again, I'm fingers crossed that maybe the Fed comes in and says, OK, we're going to save everybody. We're going to cut rates and we're going to do this and that because it's an election year. Right. And we know that the current sitting president, uh, Biden and Kamala Harris and so forth, they're going to pressure the Fed to do these things to make sure the stock market and the economy looks as best as possible right before the election. Every president does this, Republican or Democrat. So um these are the things you want to pay attention to. And let's look at the global liquidity and what's happening with the M2 and pay attention to the Fed because the markets want to see some action from the Fed. And then it's back to the same old story, guys, the status quo, print more money and asset prices rise. So as I stated before, I'm waiting to see where this market, you know, find some sort of bottom before I start taking a position because I don't want to catch a falling knife. Uh, but that's where it is. It's at. These are the reasons, guys. And uh uh, you know, it's just a nervous, uh, panic-filled time. Uh, but we've seen historically what happened in March of 2020. And I'll tell you a story of what we can anticipate coming recovery and then uh, move up to the new all-time highs. Folks, let me know if you agree with this. And if I missed anything, let me know what you think. Uh, leave your comments below. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, VChain, which is one of the top layer one enterprise blockchains out there. 
Go to vchain.org. Link will be in the description. Also, grab a copy of my book, Rethinking Crypto and Amazon. It's available in paperback and digital. Thank you guys for watching and listening. I appreciate you all, and I'll talk to you all later.